So you saw it. Today we're talking about being content. So first I want to shut down some myths. First, just because you're being content doesn't mean that you're not striving for improvement or that you have any goals. And two, being content doesn't mean that you're stagnant. Instead, it means that you're being appreciative and grateful for what you have because you could have less than what you have. You could have nothing. So when it comes to being content, it comes down to two things that you have to remember. First thing is God is in control. So plans, I ain't gonna say just throw them out the window, but do not rely on your plans. Like one thing my husband always say is, expect your plans to fail and at least if you expect your plans to fail one you won't be disappointed you won't be surprised honestly you won't be surprised and the second thing with that is you already have a plan of action you're prepared no matter what happens basically so i had to learn that but the main thing is if you trust in god it'll help you grow in your faith so if you're content but what you have, that means you trust that he got you doing what you're supposed to be doing. He got you experiencing what you're supposed to experience. Like everybody's going to experience trials. Everybody's going to go through stuff. So to me, it grows your faith because you know you're not in control, but you also trust that everything is going to work out in the end. For example, people who like try to control everything, they think they're in control instead of God. For example, you can say, oh, if I go to college, get this degree, then I'm going to work here making this much money. So I'm going to be able to get this and do this. <laughs> it ain't going to go that way. I mean, even just speaking on making a certain amount of money, a lot of people don't even work in their field when they get that degree. It's like nothing you ever plan for will 100% go the way you think it will go. Like you ever, ooh, yeah, good example. Like with your tax return money, a lot of people be like, oh, I'm a, well, a lot of people waste their money, but the folks who are not just wasting their money, they're like, okay, my card's getting old. You know, it's almost on this last leg. I'm gonna use this tax return to pay for another car, get a used car, whatever. You said that's what you're gonna do, right? But guess what's gonna happen? You can have a bunch of health issues and the insurance not doing what it's supposed to do. That could be a time where you get in a car wreck, so now you don't have any car at all. Whereas at first you're just going to use some of that money to go towards a used car. Now you don't have any car at all. When your refrigerator stops working, your house catch on fire. Somebody drive a car into your house. Your AC or your heat went out. You're going to have to replace that. Like, you just can't control what can happen. One good way that I think a lot of people think they have control, but they don't, is like when it comes to having kids. If a man and woman have sex and, you know, no protection, boom, that's a baby. It don't work like that. Just because you did that doesn't mean that you'll have a baby. The same way that if you did take some type of precautious measures that don't mean that you're not going to get pregnant and if you do get pregnant don't be trying to have control thinking you're gonna abort the baby because you didn't want it don't be trying to abort your baby that should not kill it's so like if you did want a baby and you call yourself doing everything you could to have one and you're not having one you then have to become content but if you don't get one if you don't have a child you still got to be content and you got to find some type of way to make the most of it because that's what he wants right now for you. So you have to have faith that whatever he wants you to endure through right now, whatever he visions for you to happen in your life, you got to roll with it. You got to accept it. You got to have faith that in the end, all of it's going to be good. Second thing that you need to remember in order to be content is do you have what you need to live? So in the Bible, it says that the main things you need to live is a house, clothes, food, and water. So if you got all four of those things, anything else you have, that's bonus. That's blessings, honestly. So you shouldn't be looking at it as, oh, this car about to break down. 
Oh, I had the same clothes for five years. My socks got holes in it. Like, the socks still can keep you warm. <laughs> but like I said, if you can't afford to get better socks, you still gotta be content with what you have. At least you got something to put on your foot, okay? The job you got, you don't like. But at least you have a job to be able to cover your rent, your mortgage, your car insurance. Hopefully you got some savings, electricity, water, things like that. If you're able to pay for that stuff, yes, you can strive and want a better job and do things to get a better job. But all the while, if all your plans in order to get that stuff don't go the way you wanted it to go, you still have to be content with where you at right now. And yes, that is all tough. That is very tough. But don't worry, I'm going to give you some solutions in a minute. Like a lot of times people be trying to do what they call keeping up with the Joneses. Just because you saw somebody else get the newest Jordans or you saw somebody get the newest iPhone, that doesn't mean that you got to get that. You may have eight kids and you need a bigger house. If you're not able to get that bigger house until five years down the road, you got to be content that whole way up them five years. You can't be sitting there complaining, asking why, asking God why you didn't get this, why you didn't get that. You doing this, you doing that, why aren't you being rewarded? You still have a house, so you gotta remember that. You got a house, you got food to feed the children. You got money in order to afford the things like clothes for your children as they grow. Like a lot of times we have what we need in life, but we're focusing on abundance. We want a lot of stuff that you could call vain, honestly. Stuff that really is not important and it doesn't make a difference to your walk with God. Things you can do to become more content includes praying and fasting as well as meditating on scriptures. So we're going to go a little more into meditating on scriptures. So when you meditate on scriptures, that's you reading and keeping in the back of your mind whenever you're struggling with something. You repeat something in your head and that reminds you and gets you back on track to where you're supposed to be, what your goal is, how you want to be. So in this instance, I'm going to share some scriptures that I read and I like to meditate on when I struggle with being content. My favorite is Matthew 6.33 because it honestly helps you get your priorities right. It talks about how you need to put God first and be righteous and everything else you'll end up receiving. Being righteous means to keep the commandments. So if you're keeping all his laws, all his statutes, all his commandments, then everything else he gonna take care of because you're doing what he wants you to do. You're pleasing him. He's gonna please you. We're his children. He wants us to be just as happy pleasing him before he make us even a little more happier by giving us other things that we might want it. So all in all, you have to be pleasing God spiritually in order for him to do anything to please you here. Because honestly, anything he do to please us here isn't gonna matter when Christ returns. So if you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely enjoy this one. Bye.